we have been using some tips and tricks for such a long time that I thought it was necessary for me to see if there has been any change in 2021 in Pearson's algorithm or not. In order to find out, I went for an actual test at RMIT in Melbourne. And I've got my results as well. So in this video, I will tell you what are the things I did in this test and what is the result. If you want to find out about it, if you want to know what happened in the test, you will have to watch this video until the end. If you are new to this channel, my name is Roman and I'm the founder of Roman PT. At Roman PT's website, you can start your PT preparation for completely free. And at any time when you feel like you need more features or more support, you can upgrade your plan. Now talking about today's topic, that is what happened in the test, what I did in the test and what did I find at the end? Let's talk about that. First thing, I had a few experiments in mind when I went for the test. The first experiment I was thinking about was about repeat sentence. In repeat sentence, almost everyone has a problem. That is, your short-term memory sometimes may not help you. So when you are trying to recall the sentence, you may start stammering because of which you may lose your fluency. And sometimes you may have problem with your pronunciation as well. Now, if it happens in the middle of the test, uh, in repeat sent uh, sentence section, then it will start affecting other repeat sentence questions as well and subsequently the entire test. So I wanted to find out what are the options that we can use in the test? What are the things we can do in the test? So my experiment was quite simple. I decided that if I come across a long sentence, I'll simply skip it. I'll not even try it. I, want to I wanted to see what would be the result. So I only got two long sentences and I skipped them. Although I could remember the sentence, I simply skipped them because I wanted to find out if it would have any impact on my score or not. Now, when I got my result at the end, my score in fluency, my score in pronunciation, both of them were 90 and I scored 90 in speaking as well. So unlike what some people may tell you, what happens in one particular question inside one particular question type may not have impact on your entire test performance. Because as far as your performance in the test is concerned and as far as the assessment of that performance is concerned, I think they are looking at your overall performance in the test rather than how you did in one particular question. So in overall scheme of things, if you mess up with one repeat sentence question or let's say one describe image question, it may not have much impact in your overall score. The only time when you can have impact on your score is when you start repeating the same kind of mistakes. And that's where it's important for you to consult someone who knows about the test, who can guide you through the entire process. So let me show you what I actually did in repeat sentence. I will, I will show you what I actually did, how I actually did it in the test. So for this, let's go to our website where I will show you what happened and how I did the test. Now, let's go to repeat sentence question. By the way, this is the place where you can practice the questions, watch the videos, join the live classes, watch master classes, um, and do the mock test, mock mini test, and so on. So at any time you feel like you want to test, just go to romanpt.com, sign up for the free class, have a look around, and if you are convinced, you can upgrade your plan and start practicing as many questions as you like. All right, so um, I'm picking this set for the demonstration today, and I'll show you what I did in the test. You must ensure you do not include too much irrelevant information. So, as you saw here, I did not do anything. I simply clicked next and went to the next question when I felt like that question was too long for me to answer. And that was the trick. Now, can you do this in all the sections, all the questions? Of course not. You cannot do this again and again in the entire repeat section, uh, sorry, repeat sentence question type. But if at any place you feel like I don't exactly know what to do or I can't remember the whole sentence, just click next. If you can repeat a few words, that's fine as long as you can repeat them without stammering. If you do it in one or two sentences, then it's not a problem. Now, your concern perhaps will be what about listening? Will it impact my listening score? And the answer is no. But you have to remember that in order for you to get the maximum score in both speaking and listening, and if you are skipping sentences in repeat sentence, 
you must be able to answer other questions without much problem. If you start skipping questions and if you start answering questions incorrectly as well, then of course you cannot expect to get good score. So the first experiment was about repeat sentence. I skipped the sentence which I found long and that was the trick. There was no impact on the score. After that, the second experiment I did was in writing section. In the writing section, as you know that we can use templates. So I wanted to check our new template in the exam. So what I did was, again, let's go back to our website where I will show you what I ac actually did. So let's, let's cross this out and go to the writing section. So in the writing section, you know, we have two types of questions, summarized written text and some um, AC writing question. In the summarized written text question, I did just one simple thing. What I did was I first wrote the template as it is. And then after that, I got um, three sentences from the passage, which I included in my answer, in my template. And I did not change a single thing, not even a single word. Now, this, this is the first time I have done something like this. Otherwise, previously, I would make some changes. Although our students in the past had told me that they did not even change any word and they had still scored 90. I hadn't done that myself personally. So I wanted to see if it was actually true. So I did it. And again, there was no impact on my score. So what it simply means is when you're answering summarized written text question, what you can do is you can simply get three important ideas from the passage and use those ideas. In order to make a proper connection between the ideas, try to use some linking expressions or otherwise you can use some templates which will help you to grab the ideas and use in your answer without making much changes. The third experiment was in AC writing question. So in AC writing question, uh, what I did was I simply used a universal template. So our website has something called universal template and we have um, you can see here that we have universal template and we have templates based on different question types. So in my exam, this time, I just used universal template. And the thing that I was trying to test was I was trying to find out if using universal template is enough to get more than 79 or not. Because many times the students had that concern, that doubt, what happens if they use universal template in the test. So what I simply did in my exam, I got the question about one recent innovation in technology, which has greatly impacted our society. And I was asked to write about either positive or negative aspects of it. So I chose the internet. So what I did in the exam, the universal template, which I created and I had memorized, I wrote without changing anything. And in three, uh, sorry, in four places where I was supposed to use the topic, I just wrote the internet four times and that's it. I didn't do anything. And by 11 or 12 minutes, I had finished the whole uh, AC writing section without any problem. I, then after that, I started checking for my uh, spelling errors, grammar errors, vocabulary errors, because sometimes while typing, you may mistype the word. And because of that, you can have problems. So I checked for those things. And yeah, that's all I did. I got only one AC question. So I finished, I submitted before 20 minutes. And again, I scored 90 out of 90 in writing. Yes, my score in uh, spelling uh, was, I think, uh, 87 and grammar was 89 or maybe the other way around. But that's not important because I scored 90 out of 90 in writing. So maybe I mistyped a word or maybe I lost the point. It uh, doesn't matter. As long as you can get more points, um, I mean, more than 79s in your communicative skills, it does not matter how much you scored in enabling skills. So this trick also works. So, so far, there are three things that you know which work in the exam. First is in repeat sentence, if you find any sentence too long to repeat, you can simply skip it. Second, in summarized written text, it's enough for you to just write three sentences from the um, from the text and use it without any change. Whereas in AC writing, you can use some kind of universal template where you can replace a few words with the topic vocabulary and still you'll get the full score. The fourth experiment was in read or paragraph. Now, it was not an experiment in itself because um, the only thing I did was I tried to answer the question quickly by only focusing on one pair that I thought was easy for me to get from the question. So I simply grabbed one pair from the left-hand side, dragged it to the right-hand side. The rest of the sentences I just read and if I felt um, that one of them could be the third sentence, I used that as the third sentence. One of them could be the fourth sentence, I used that as the fourth sentence and so on. So I did not think too much about what could be the correct pair, except for one pair. 
Now, I do not know whether my rest of the pairs were coincidentally correct or it did not matter, but I scored 90 out of 90 in reading as well. So what it means is in rear of paragraphs, maybe it's not a very good idea to spend too much time. Um, the reason for that is first, the rear of paragraph itself carries only around 10 to 11 points. And the second reason, which is more important reason is after rear of paragraph, you have to do fill in the blanks questions. And in fill in the blanks, you should be spending more time because that question carries more points towards your uh, total score. So it's more important that you spend less time on reader paragraphs and more time on fill in the blanks question. That does not mean that you can skip reader paragraph questions or you should not practice reader paragraph questions. You still should learn uh, the ideas to answer these questions. Now, if you want to find out how to answer reader paragraph questions, I have made several videos about that topic and I'll be making more videos in the future as well. So don't miss them. Or you can join me live uh, on Sunday from 7 p.m. where you can ask me questions or you can see me answering questions as well. The last thing that I have... Uh, I did in my um, test was in listening section that is write from dictation. So in write from dictation, my experiment was quite simple. Many of you perhaps already know about this. And that is what if you are confused between uh, different forms of the same word, like you are not exactly sure whether you heard book or books, or let's say uh, you heard um, plan or plans and so on. So let's say this is the question and I'm not sure whether neuron or neurons was the answer. So I will write neurons, neuron, and I'll write neurons are principally involved in the chemical processes. So you can see that I have written both neuron and neurons because I'm not exactly sure whether I heard neuron or neurons. In this case, although logically you can say that there is R means it has to be neurons, but this is just for the demonstration purpose and I hope you got the idea here. If you feel confused between two words because um, you are not exactly sure whether you heard singular or plural, past form of the verb or present form of the verb, write both of them. Make sure that they have been appropriately capitalized if they need to be capitalized and that's it. Still, it did not have any impact on the score. So, guys, these are the things I did in the actual test. And as you have seen, uh, there has not been any impact on my score. By the way, let me show you my score as well. So this is my score. As you can see here, my score is 90 in all the four sections. And even in the enabling skills, I have got 90 in almost all of them, except in spelling and vocabulary. What that means is... Only in spelling and vocabulary, perhaps I lost a few points because um, I did not um, pay attention to my, let's say, typing. Maybe I typed one of the words or two of the words in the exam wrong, and maybe that was the reason. Otherwise, none of these experiments or none of the things that I did in the test had any impact on my overall score as well as scoring each question type, I mean each section. So what is the take-home message? The most important thing we can learn from this is in our exam, we need to focus more on the overall performance of the test rather than just performance in one question type. There are some questions which can be answered by using certain kind of strategies or tricks. Now, there is always a proper way to answer the question. And if you do it in that way, or if you can do it in that way, you will definitely get the score. But there is also another way in this test, especially in questions like um, in question sections like um, speaking and writing and listening. And it's important that you learn about those questions, you learn those tricks and apply them so that you can save time in your preparation and use that time towards other more important or difficult questions. If you think this video is useful for you, then please hit the like button and share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel if you do not want to miss any videos in the future and hit the bell icon to get the notification. And remember, every Sunday from 7 p.m. I do live classes where you can ask me questions and I will try my best to answer all of your questions if you will ask me in those sessions. Until our next live class, stay safe and I'll see you soon.